Hello YouTubers, this is Brian again from Van and Solar Adventures and today um, I wanted to post a tidbit of information about the Energy Kodiak unit. I have several reviews on YouTube about it so I'm going to try not to repeat anything but I want to show you something new. And then also I'm going to talk about expanding it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about two different things today. So one, the first thing is... Um, my energy Kodiak would not turn on. Um, it was blank here. I'd turn on the on button and it wouldn't come on. I would uh, plug it in and charge it. And uh, I would leave it on solar all day and, and, and it wouldn't turn on. So uh, nowhere in the manual can I find out how to do this. Um, I had to actually send an email to Energy to find this out. But to reset your Kodiak, if you buy this unit, if 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 you've done everything that I said, that you know the unit is fully charged, uh, it still won't come on. You've tried plugging it in and charging it. You tried turning it on. Whatever that doesn't work. To actually reset it, what you have to do is with a plug pl with the cord with the charge cord plugged in. You have to put the uh, charge, instead of in the side, to as you normally would to charge it from your home adapter, you would typically use this for a, a solar panel, but this to charge from your home. You would put it in this light output. So this is an output to charge one of the uh, Kodiak uh, lights. Yeah, I, I, I posted a video about that as well. But anyway, so, so normally this is an output so you have to put this this in as a power input. Now you would think if you put power into an output that that would damage the instrument, but no, that's how Kodiak Energy uh, decided, their engineers decided on how to reset it. You put power into this and the system recognizes that that's the reset and it will immediately turn on. So I have just done this, so I can't actually show it to you, but I'm, told, I'm telling you that it works I just actually reset it and so now it, it it will turn on. So that's how you reset the Kodiak. You you have to actually have to take the power input from a wall adapter and put it into the output here. And uh, and then it'll turn on and then you unplug it. Of course you don't leave it plugged in. That's the the only thing to do to, to uh, reset it. Alright, enough for that. Today, I'm going to expand my Kodiak system. Uh, they have in their manual, I think you can add at least eight or more batteries to it, 100 amp hour batteries. So I did a lot of research. I've been researching batteries for the past two weeks. What is the best one? Is it the, uh, is it the six volt car battery, uh, six volt golf court batteries like the Duracell GC2? Is it the Trojan 110s uh, E5 or something like that? Is the is what is the best uh, battery? So first of all, in my application, in my shed, it's outside year round and in Missouri, it gets below freezing. So you cannot have a uh, flooded lead acid battery outside in the winter. It'll freeze, it'll ruin your battery. So uh, all flooded lead acid, lead acid batteries are out of the question for me. I'm not gonna pay to heat my shed. And I'm not going to bring my super heavy batteries in for the winter. I, I want to use my system year-round. So uh, that eliminates all flooded lead acid. All right, then the question is, that leaves lithium, which is outrageously expensive, or AGMs. So AGMs. So I've chosen AGMs. All my other batteries are AGMs. I decided to expand the... Uh, the Kodiak with this battery. This is actually the replacement battery for the Yeti 1250. This is the one Goal Zero recommends as a replacement battery for the Yeti 1250. And I believe this is the same battery that's in the Yeti 1250. It's a 100 amp hour deep cycle. You want to get one. You want to get one that's a true deep cycle battery. This is the UV 12 1000. I got it right off Amazon. I got it from a seller that was rated high, brand new battery. Um, uh, it's got a uh, warranty, etc. But this is a true deep cycle battery, and it was a good price. 
Uh, I believe I paid something like 130 for it. And uh, there's the front of it. So this is a brand new battery. I'm gonna charge, now that I've had my Kodiak reset, I'm gonna charge this fully tomorrow with solar and then connect it. I know I can connect it and it will do an equalization charge, but really I wanna go ahead and charge this fully and then connect it because I believe that's charged fully. And then, and I think it'll be, I think it'll treat this battery better if I do it that way. I also got these super, super heavy duty, probably more heavy duty than I need. These suckers are thick, man. They're, they're as thicker, thicker than my fingers. But, um, uh, and the, I got this from Wendy Nation. Uh, you can see Wendy Nation uh, off Amazon. And this is only 12 inches. I would have liked longer, but I got what I got. So I'll have to put the battery in close proximity. I simply connect the red to the Kodiak to the positive on the battery. It's a pretty simple connection. And of course, I, I, I connect the uh, negative to the Kodiak negative to the uh, to the battery. Also, uh, this manufacturer includes the hardware to connect to the battery. Some batteries you buy at the store doesn't have no hot, hard, hardware at all. And so that's kind of convenient. That's an, another advantage. And it has this uh, holding straps. A lot of batteries you buy at the store don't have the holding straps. So that is cool. And also, if my Yeti 1250 battery ever fails, I could use this to replace it. So, uh, dual purpose here. Um, so again, why did I choose this? Uh, if I got six volt, I have a 12 volt system. So I would have had to buy two six volt batteries, which exceeds the cost of one of these, to get my 12 volt. Yeah, you could say I would have had double the capacity, but uh, actually this was a, a good price. If you look up the price of a six volt AGM battery, I believe it's more than that. And I would have had two of them. So anyways, this actually financially is a better deal. AGMs last longer than flooded lead acid. I can use it year round. I don't have to worry about it freezing. I still want to try to temperature control my shed a little bit, but um, not like lead acid. It's maintenance free too. Those lead acid batteries, those flooded batteries, you got to check the water. Only use distilled water and refill. Check it monthly. You let those things go dry again, you'll run them. This is totally um, maintenance free. And this will add, this is a 100 amp hour battery. It'll add 1,000 watts. So I have 1,100 watts in the Kodiak, 1,000 watts here. So I'll, I'll basically double the power of my system, 2,100 watts. Um, this can go to, to a depth of discharge with 80% without hurting the battery. This only goes to a depth of discharge of 50% without uh, hurting the uh, life cycle of the battery. So I need to be more careful. I might even have to email Energy Kodiak, you know, because I like taking this. You can see I've taken this all the way down to 80% because it doesn't hurt this battery. But if I have it connected to this and I take it down to that, I think it will take that down 80% to only 20% is left. So I don't think, I think when this is connected, it tries, tries to teach, treat them as one battery. And it's got the electronics to detect what type of battery it is and how to charge it. But I don't know that it will make sure I don't uh, discharge it below 50%. So I'm going to have to be careful about that. Uh, the cool thing about the Energy Kodiak, uh, 600 watt solar input capacity. 600 watts. My uh, Yeti 1250 only has 240 watt maximum input. My Yeti 400 only has 120 watt input. So if you're building a new solar system, if you're a newbie, you don't want to build your own system from scratch, this is a good one to start with. Why? Super high output capacity, all the uh, outputs that you would need, USB 12 volt, the specialty connectors from Kodiak, six power connectors and an RV plug, and 600 watts of input, and the controller uh, controls uh, up to eight batteries on their website. I believe it's even more than that, but you, you shouldn't really need more than eight batteries for a small hobby system. Um, so I think that's it. It's a simple connection, so I'm not, I'm not going to show you that. And I don't want to connect it yet till it, the charge is equalized. And um, again, I got this off. If you, if you want to, you know, I'm sorry, I'm bad at links, but just go to Amazon, plug in UB12 1000 battery, 
and find a good seller with a good reputation and um, and get this this is a good 100 amp hour AGM battery by the way if you find a better AGM battery for the price factor in price and quality and deep cycle and all of that please let me know because I will learn on that um, and I showed you how to reset the Kodiak. That is not in the manual anywhere that I can find. So I definitely wanted to post the video for that reason. Again, to reset the Kodiak after you know that it's locked up. You don't want to put power input to the output normally all the time, right? Only if it's locked up totally, you put the power. Normally power input that would go here, you put it here. And it'll reset it and you unplug it and then, and then it's working normally. All right, thanks people. Have a good day.